right, the first type of behavior that many of us engage in is called being evaluative versus being descriptive. So if I was to come home and say, oh my gosh, what a mess, versus saying, oh wow, there's a sink full of dishes. One would be evaluative, a mess, and one would be descriptive, saying something such as, hmm, there's dishes in the sink. One is judging, using the word mess. In addition, it's very ambiguous, what is a mess? Whereas a sink full of dishes, and you can say to describe it, smelly dishes, or dirty dishes, or smelly dirty dishes is going to be a lot more descriptive. So when we're communicating, it's really important to be descriptive versus evaluative. A second example could be from maybe myself, an instructor. Maybe I write on your paper, wonderful job. And I'm sure we all want wonderful jobs. But when you're looking at what was wonderful, what it was it? If I was to write, this paper shows critical thinking when you use a specific example and explain, secondly, how it meets the theory, as you did in paragraph two. That will be much more specific or descriptive. That will help you to feel supported in the communication, even though wonderful is, well, it's supportive. It's still not descriptive. So whether it's negative or positive, we'd like to become more descriptive and less evaluative in our communication on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Here's an example in real time. 